friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about diatomaceous earth, also known as DE. So it is technically the fossilized remains of microalgae that has naturally formed into sedimentary rock over time, and then that is crumbled down into really, 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 really fine pieces of this little white powder. Diatomaceous earth is a mechanical insecticide and it can be used to treat a myriad of houseplant pests like fungus gnats, thrips, spider mites, aphids, and many more. But it also has several other uses. It is often used as a filtration aid, typically in pools, as a mild abrasive that you might find in toothpaste, and a deodorizer in things like cat litter. So it has a variety of uses, but for what we're using it for in the houseplant community, you're going to want to be making sure you're getting the food grade diatomaceous earth because that is the sort of DE that you can put on your plants and will actually do the job because it's slightly different than the pool grade diatomaceous earth that they sell on the market. So make sure you're getting food grade. And that's a big key point here. So while diatomaceous earth feels soft to the touch to us, kind of like a cornflower or baby powder sort of feel, it actually has tiny little razor sharp edges. I like to think of it as like a bunch of little tiny microscopic shells. Cleo wants to come hang out. <laughs> but these little sharp edges on the diatomaceous earth will actually cut up insects' exoskeletons as they move across it, all while also absorbing the natural oils that those exoskeletons produce, thus dehydrating the insect and killing it over time. I should also mention that it is safe for humans to be around as well as pets wherever she is, down there. Once the dust has settled and you can't be breathing it in, it is completely fine. If you breathe a tiny bit in, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but I do suggest wearing masks and goggles while you're using it. I am not the best for it and I tend not to wear masks and goggles while using it. I'm just being careful, but I know that's probably not good enough, so I should probably wear a mask and goggles while utilizing it. So I'm gonna talk about how I use this to deal with fungus gnats first, as that is like slightly different than the use for things like thrips and aphids and spider mites. So for fungus gnats, you would use diatomaceous earth as a part of a multi-pronged approach because diatomaceous earth will only kill the fungus gnats that are on or around your soil. If they're flying in the air and they don't land on that particular pot, you aren't gonna be able to get rid of them. It will not get rid of all of them, so you wanna use it in conjunction with other things as well. But essentially what you wanna do is layer a thin layer of diatomaceous earth on the top of the soil as a sort of pot topper. When the soil is semi-dry, when you're trying to get rid of fungus gnats, the soil, you wanna try and keep it on the drier side anyways but when you put on diatomaceous earth, you want to make sure that the soil is not soaking wet because it is absorbent. And once the diatomaceous earth has absorbed water from the soil, it will no longer be able to absorb the oils from the exoskeletons of the insects and fungus gnats. So it will not be effective anymore. So it only is really effective when it's in its dry form. So basically how it'll work is if a fungus gnat lands on the plant with the diatomaceous earth on it, it will cut up the exoskeleton and dehydrate the fungus gnat. And also if there's already larvae and like small fungus gnats in the soil, when they emerge and try to go out into the rest of the world, they will brush past this diatomaceous earth and again, it will cut them up and dehydrate them. So it's kind of blocking both gnats going in and gnats coming out of the soil. The thing is though, you're going to need to put it on all of the plants in the area. You can't just put it on one or two. I suppose if you have one really, really, really infested plant, you could put it on that one, but not others. But that only works if not a single fungus gnat is living outside of that plant because if they're living outside of the plant, they can go into any other plant soil and then continue their population. So you really wanna be putting it on every single plant within that sort of area. I'm gonna be putting it on every single plant in my entire collection. But also what's really annoying is that it stops working once you water your plants. So you either have to reapply it after every water once it's dry again or 
only bottom water, but even still, it can absorb moisture that way. So, it is a balance, and it isn't ideal, but it can work as sort of a facet of the sort of bigger fungus gnat infestation picture, which it is in my current fungus gnat situation. When using diatomaceous earth for things like thrips and spider mites and aphids and kind of pests that are more on the leaves of your plant than in the soil, you can do two things. You can put it as like a soil topper, kind of like you did for fungus gnats, and that will take any sort of pests that fall into the soil. So like when thrips drop down into the soil when they're, I think, larvae or pupae or something, and then they eventually emerge back up the plant from the soil, during that stage it'll kill them. Or if you are brushing plants down in a dry sort of manner, it can kill them once they land on the soil. But also, you can dust it onto the plant's leaves, creating a, like a very mild abrasive surface for them, so when the pests crawl across it, it will dehydrate them by cutting up their exoskeleton, absorbing the oils, and killing them. Dusting the leaves is a slightly more complicated process, and I've not really done it much for myself. I think I've done it once or twice on a couple of plants quite a long time ago for thrips, but it's not my primary use of diatomaceous earth because it is slightly more complicated and it takes quite a lot more time than just putting a layer on top of the soil of a lot of plants. So what you would want to do is with some gloves on you can very 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 gently rub it in to the surface of the leaves and I mean very gently because if you're rubbing it too rough it can actually harm the leaf so you have to be super super light-handed with this but just take some with your glove and like wipe it on the tops and the bottoms of the leaves it is a lot easier for it to stick to the top of the leaf than the bottom of the leaf because of gravity but <laughs> you should probably put it on both because pests tend to congregate on the bottom sides of the leaves and so that's where you're going to have the most effective damage with the diatomaceous earth or what I think is probably the, the easier method for applying it to leaves is get a light sort of paintbrush or makeup brush, clean of course, and brush and dust it over the top and the bottom of the leaf. And that will kind of do the same thing in a less sort of dangerous for the leaf sort of way. Again though, it does take time and isn't the most fun process, but it can be really useful when you're treating something like spider mites because the diatomaceous earth, when you're brushing it on the leaf, will get caught in this sort of webbing of spider mites, and as soon as the spider mites crawl across that webbing, they're getting cut up and dehydrating and thus dying. So it is very useful for that, but I find it a lot more complicated than using things like predatory mites or like systemic pesticides. <laughs> and you want to be repeating the application of diatomaceous earth on sort of leaves once every week or two, or if you water your plants in the shower or something and get them fully covered with water, that will wash off the diatomaceous earth, so you'll need to repeat after you sort of clean the leaves with any sort of water product. Unfortunately, there's also some cons of diatomaceous earth. It is not sentient and therefore does not discriminate between good and bad insects. It will cut up anything with an exoskeleton, so it can be very harmful to things like bees or predatory mites or something that you have within your collection. So if you can't really use it in conjunction with predatory mites or like ladybugs or stuff like that, it is okay with worms because those don't have exoskeletons, but you kind of have to use it without predatory mites because it will not, you can't use them in conjunction really because it'll just kill them, which is unfortunate and a waste of your money. Another big con, which I have touched on this a couple of times, is that once it gets wet, it doesn't work. So you kind of have to make sure that you're keeping your environment fairly dry in order to have it be effective. And you have to repeat so often after watering and it ends up being quite a slow process. But if you're using it in a multi-pronged approach, like I talked about for fungus gnats, it can be very useful because you are combating things from multiple different sides. Airborne with things like yellow sticky traps in the soil with diatomaceous earth, 
and maybe mosquito bites or something which have BTI which is killing the larvae as well so if you're working in a multi-pronged approach it can be a lot faster but I wouldn't suggest this as like the sort of only product you're using to get rid of something like fungus gnats or thrips or stuff like that. It is kind of useful if you have it on hand, like I have it for fungus gnats, that's pretty much why I got diatomaceous earth, but if I have it on hand and I don't have something like neem oil or SB invigorator or predatory mites, if I notice something like spider mites, I can just start the sort of process of getting rid of those with diatomaceous earth while I'm waiting for something else to arrive. So. Like I said, you wouldn't want to use it alone, but it does work as a part of a bigger thing or like in the meantime until you can find something else that's slightly bigger and more effective. So that is it. That is pretty much everything you're going to need to know about how to use diatomaceous earth as a natural insecticide for your houseplants. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on whether or not you've used diatomaceous earth before for houseplant pests in your home and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.